This is the KP184 electronic load taken apart and in this video I'm going to address some of the issues I found during the review and teardown video of this unit but also some issues people mentioned in the comments of those videos. There are seven things I would like to address in total. First is the banana plug internal diameter problem. Next, the grounding of the blue metal part. The third point is the bad solder joints on the uh, thick wires uh, coming to the main board. The fourth point is the um, MOSFETs safe operating area and if they are fake or not. Then I learned about a supposed bug in tripping the overcurrent protection, so we'll check that. Then there is a supposed oscillation in the current regulation loop and we'll check to see if that is present on our version of the electronic load. And then finally I'll show you the uh, calibration procedure. Uh, I'm not going to be performing it on my unit because it doesn't need it. I'll just link to the uh, document containing the procedure. For the banana plug internal diameter problem, as you may remember, it was a 4.2 millimeter uh, internal diameter, which is too wide to ensure a good contact for uh, all 4 millimeter banana connectors. And I happen to have these uh, M5 banana plugs, which uh, would fit nice as a replacement. These have an internal diameter of 3.85 millimeters, so they make a snug fit with any decent banana connector. I'll put some links in the description to places where you can order these. Now, depending on where you order them, you will find them rated for 24 up to 30 amps. And it seems like 30 amps is the maximum you can get on an M5 thread uh, banana connector. But the original connectors are also M5, so uh, these should be fine, at least in my particular case, because I don't plan to go over 30 amps anyway. But if you... Uh, need to push this to its limits up to 40 amps then you might consider uh, putting uh, some beefier connectors uh, higher thread than M5. After removing the original connectors I noticed I could simply use the new connector without any plastic accessories on the front if I wanted to do so but I think it will look nicer if I use this uh, front cover plastic accessories because this will prevent it from spinning inside the uh, mounting hole while trying to secure it on the other side with the uh, uh, M5 nut. You just have to slightly uh, file this uh, rounded shape to make it fit inside the hole but in the end I think this uh, fits perfectly over the uh, front panel and after installing the uh, new connectors you can decide if you uh, would like to use the uh, newer slim M5 nut on the front panel or if you want to use the older ones uh, they both fit on the same thread. The sponsor of this video is JLC PCB. They have an excellent offer for prototype PCBs, just $2 for 5 pieces. You can pick any solder mask color with no extra cost and you can also have those PCBs assembled by them. Right now they are offering every user a $7 coupon for the assembly service. Regarding the grounding issue with the folded metal enclosure we discovered in the teardown video, that is due to improper design and thick paint to this part of the enclosure uh, which was not grounded. I don't know if maybe they thought the uh, thick paint was enough insulation or maybe they didn't care. The point is, if you want to fix this issue, you have two options. You can either run a uh, second earth wire from the common earth point on the transformer to a new, a new point drilled in this uh, metal part and uh, scrape away some of the paint um, or just uh, go ahead and scrape some of the paint uh, from the uh, screw going to the hole in the middle and this you you could ensure electrical contact uh, between the uh, this blue part of the enclosure and the bottom part of the chassis which is grounded. There are ready-made uh, grounding wires with lugs on the end. Uh, you can find something like this and order it ahead of time to save you the, the trouble of building one. And I'll put a link to these in the description below. But I'm gonna go with the second method uh, for scraping the, the paint around the uh, middle hole uh, just to provide enough electrical uh, contact with the bottom of the enclosure. This solution is good enough for me. 
Regarding the bad solder joints, those were an easy fix. They were present on the two thick wires coming from the bottom power board to the main board. And I, I have applied some flux. The soldering iron was set for 350 degrees. I used the biggest tip I have for this soldering iron for better thermal transfer. And I flowed some leaded solder into those joints, which fixed the issue in no time. At the end, I also cleaned the board with some uh, flux cleaner to remove the flux residue because I don't like leaving that, st that stuff behind. Now let's talk about the MOSFETs used in the KP184. We have six pieces IRFP250M from International Rectifier and these are pretty popular MOSFETs which means there are a bunch of fakes available in the wild. You wouldn't expect a test instrument manufacturer to get their MOSFETs from the black market and so having the risk of using fake MOSFETs but we'll see what we can find on the subject. Let's start by decoding the markings on the MOSFETs. First we have the part number, first we have the part number, then below we have the International Rectifier logo. And by the way, International Rectifier was acquired by Infineon in 2015. Then we have a date code, P stands for lead free. We have the year 9, which could be 2009. And then we have the week 21 and J, which is the assembly line. Below that we have the assembly lot code. And it isn't clear to me how a MOSFET manufactured by Infineon in 2019 would be marked, if it would still use the international rectifier logo and how the manufacturing year would be marked. So let's assume these are MOSFETs manufactured in 2009, when the company was still named International Rectifier. This would make them new old stock, which Konkin somehow purchased, which isn't unreasonable to consider because of the popularity of these MOSFETs, you could uh, find them in some new old stock. To me, it would seem logical that if someone was making fake MOSFETs, they would mark them with the more recent manufacturing year and the newer logo. But the ultimate test here would be to X-ray these MOSFETs and compare them with a genuine unit that would show any difference in the dyes used inside the package. Because most people don't have the equipment to do that kind of experiment, the next best thing you can do is just head on to the reputable distributor website like Mouser or Digikey and order yourself six of these MOSFETs. You'd be pretty sure you are getting the genuine stuff from the big names and you could go ahead and replace them if you don't feel confident enough that the ones that come with the unit are genuine. What I'm going to do is get in contact with someone from Infineon to see if they're interested in taking a closer look at these MOSFETs. Just out of curiosity and if they agree, I would go right ahead, desolder these and send them to Infineon for further analysis. Until then, we just can't say for sure if these are fake or genuine MOSFETs. No matter how many pictures we check and how many opinions we read online, we just don't have the proof. Some people reported in the comments of the review video that going over the maximum power tripping the overpower protection would require a hard mains switch reset to recover from. I'm not sure which revision he was running but on my unit this problem is not present. I've tried this, I had to put three of my gopher power supplies in parallel to generate the required power of over 400 watts and every time the power supply tripped the overpower protection which was happening around 410 watts it quickly recovered with the press of the on button so this might be a problem present on older revisions banggood appears to be selling the latest revision mine had a date code of february 2020 so that's pretty recent i would recommend getting these from banggood if possible because i think that would ensure uh, you will get a uh, new revision of this uh, electronic load. I've also found another problem reported on some forums and shown on YouTube by various users of this electronic load and these guys were seeing some oscillations in the current regulation of the load. They were using an external shunt resistor to monitor the current waveform on an oscilloscope and so I'm going to try the same thing to see if my unit suffers from the same problem. I found a user reporting this on his uh, YouTube channel and he claims uh, Konkin sent him uh, a potential fix for this over email and the fix involved removing a certain capacitor from the motherboard and uh, that would fix the issue. To test if this issue is present, I'm using my HP linear bench power supply. This is a very stable power supply and I've set it for 5 volts, it doesn't really matter. Let's see what kind of waveform we get if we sync 1 amp into the KP184 through this uh, 1 ohm resistor. So the waveform we get is not exactly clean, we do have some noise present here. There are these peaks with a frequency of 50 Hz. Uh, 
they don't look as bad as shown by people using the older revision of the motherboard uh, so maybe they did adjust something in the in the circuit but they are definitely still there i'm going to remove the capacitor that was recommended in the fix to see if this makes any difference if it helps remove the noise from our waveform or not the designator on the PCB is uh, C58 for those interested and I'll overlay an image showing that. So here is the load running without the capacitor. By the way the value of that capacitor is 10 nanofarad and the waveform looks cleaner now. Those peaks are still visible but they are uh, definitely smaller. It seems like this issue is still confirmed on version 4 of the motherboard and the fix is still valid. I don't know the role of this capacitor but removing it does seem to improve the constant current mode noise rejection so I'm gonna leave mine off. And the last item on our list is the calibration procedure for the KP184. I will link a document with the procedure in the description below. I received this by email from a viewer. I don't know if this comes from Konkin or if someone else put it together uh, but it describes the whole procedure so you will find the link to this document in the description below. Follow it step by step if you need to calibrate your unit. Nothing changes in terms of this being the best electronic load you can buy in this price range. I like it and I highly recommend it if you need to test power supplies or batteries. I think you will be pleased with this unit. If you would like to see the uh, review or the teardown video of this unit, I will link these on uh, screen right now. So all you have to do is uh, click somewhere in uh, this area to watch those videos. As always, thank you for watching and don't forget you can support this channel on Patreon.